The Legacy of the Necronomicon, a comprehensive exploration of the world's most dangerous book. The literary legacy of H.P. Lovecraft continues to cast its shadow, profoundly influencing not only the cosmic horror genre, but also the broader realms of horror and strange fiction. Among his many enduring ideas, the Necronomicon stands out, a fictitious grimoire shrouded in dark rituals, magic, and arcane sciences. Though its existence as a tangible book is debated, the allure of the Necronomicon persists with Lovecraft's own fascination and the contributions of subsequent authors, weaving a tapestry of history and lore around this mysterious tome. Abdullah al-Hasrid, the Enigmatic Custodian At the heart of the Necronomicon's narrative is Abdullah al-Hasrid, a character described by Lovecraft as the crazed Arab and the presumed owner of the ominous book. al Hasred initially introduced in the story, The Nameless City, later emerges as a central figure linked to the Necronomicon. Lovecraft himself claimed that the inspiration for this character and the grimoire itself manifested in his dreams, underscoring the eerie and otherworldly nature of both, unveiling the origins. From Alazif to Necronomicon, in 1927, Lovecraft penned The History of the Necronomicon, a piece published posthumously that provides additional context to the book's origin. Originally titled Al-Azif, denoting its Arabic roots, the term refers to the nocturnal sounds believed to be the howling of demons. Al-Hazrid, a worshipper of Yog sothoth and Cthulhu, embarked on his journey in Memphis, Egypt, discovering the ruins of Babylon and the secrets of the nameless city. His subsequent relocation to Damascus, modern-day Syria, marked the genesis of the Necronomicon, completed in 738, the Forbidden Tome's perilous journey. The Necronomicon's early years saw its circulation among philosophers, captivating minds for nearly two centuries before a Greek philosopher, Theodorus Finertes, translated it in 950. Its contents were said to induce heinous acts, prompting its burning in 1058 during the sack of Constantinople. Subsequently, a Danish scholar translated it to Latin in 1228, sanctioned by the Pope. Despite attempts to erase it, the Necronomicon persisted in various European countries until the 17th century. Elusive copies and institutional safeguards. Lovecraft asserted the existence of only five copies of the original translated Necronomicon, safeguarded by prestigious institutions worldwide. The British History Museum, the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, the Widener Library of Harvard University, the University of Buenos Aires, and Miskatonic University in Arkham, Massachusetts, each held a copy. However, numerous other copies circulated, their authenticity often questionable due to being copies of copies, held mostly by private individuals. Unraveling the Enigma, the Necronomicon's Forbidden Contents, what elevates the Necronomicon to the status of the most forbidden and perilous book? Authored by a worshipper of elder gods, its pages are adorned with cryptic symbols and arcane knowledge, spanning stories, rituals, and peculiar sciences. It reveals formulas for consciousness transfer, chants to summon cosmic entities like Yog sothoth and rituals to resurrect the dead describing it as an encyclopedia of Lovecraftian lore. The Necronomicon delves into a detailed history of Earth's ancient inhabitants, ruled by unimaginable entities, the ongoing obsession. From fiction to reality, Lovecraft's minimal descriptions of the Necronomicon fueled an obsession transcending fiction. Fans, intrigued by its mystique, queried the book's authenticity in letters to Lovecraft who consistently affirmed its fictional nature. Despite this, hoaxes and tales persist with claims of the Vatican Library possessing a copy. In 1970, an author using the pseudonym Simon published a book titled Necronomicon, drawing inspiration from Sumerian mythology rather than Lovecraft's work. The success of this work and subsequent volumes blurred the lines between fiction and reality, further intensifying the ongoing fascination a Divergence of Realities, Simon's Necronomicon. Simon's Necronomicon, though unrelated to Lovecraft's mythos, garnered immense success by claiming Sumerian influences. 
This publication, often dubbed Simononomicon, generated over 800,000 sales by 2006. The bold marketing, proclaiming it as the most dangerous black book of the Western world, contributed to its popularity. This success led to three additional volumes, while skeptics prompted the release of The Necronomicon Files in 1998, aiming to establish the book's fiction through a comprehensive examination. Conclusion The Enduring Appeal of the Forbidden Tome Whether the Necronomicon is regarded as a fictional creation or a potential ancient relic, its allure remains undeniable. In a fictional context, it serves as a mysterious and deadly encyclopedia of Lovecraftian horrors. Beyond fiction, the Necronomicon's journey from literary creation to cultural fascination underscores humanity's enduring intrigue with the forbidden and the unknown. Share your thoughts and questions on this enigmatic tome in the comments below. As we delve into the shadows of myth and fiction, I remain your guide, unraveling the mysteries for you.